Well, they say that L.A. attracts uh, big fish from little ponds. Who says that? Who's this they? Whoever this, this <laughs> metaphorical they is, I'm not sure. Big fish from little ponds. Right, right. Okay. I mean, I'm in town 45 years. I haven't, haven't heard that, but go on. <laughs> Maybe it's my own quote, so okay. I'll All right. Okay. Okay. But but that general sense that a lot of people that come to LA were maybe big shots back home in a town of a thousand people, and they come to this town that's beautiful and challenging and fast paced, and they're going up against twenty versions of themselves, whether as a screenwriter, an actor, a filmmaker, a dancer. What do you say to someone that maybe was used to getting sort of more royal treatment? back home and then they come to LA and it's it's a little more of a an eye-opener you're 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 forced with the fact that you have to wait in line for things maybe you're not you don't have the same prestige as you did in your small college uh, back home what's your advice to those people? I mean, what why do you have to say anything or give advice they will this is something they're going to learn by experience which is really the only way to learn something and, and, and keep it, um, they're just going to see that that's the case. You don't have to tell them that. Um, I can see, again, there are hostile people in the arts who would like to put that person down, you know, but uh, I don't um, think uh, discouraging people is, is the way to go. Um, and I would never reprimand any such person. Um, they may be, you know, the best writer uh, that ever came out of Canton, Ohio, but, uh, you know, you're, you're here and there is tremendous competition. But you learn about that and in the experience of, uh, of struggling with your art and you try to do the, the best you can. I always tell writers, um, if you're uh, uh, lost and confused and disconnected, and frustrated and disappointed, I'm glad to hear it, not because I'm a sadistic fiend, but to me it says you're having the experiences that writers have. Yesterday, on the front page of the New York Times, big article about Philip Roth, there's no more successful writer than Roth. Um, he's 79 and he's announcing that he stopped writing, at least stopped writing fiction. and. Um, uh, I wrote down a quote, again, this is on the front page of yesterday, Sunday's New York Times. He says, writing is frustration. It's frustration, not to mention humiliation. That's a verbatim quote. Um, I realize I've actually memorized it now. Um, it says Roth. Roth has had 31 books published, 26 novels published. Um, bunches of them have been made into movies, he's made a great deal of money, he has a beautiful apartment on the Upper West Side, he has a gorgeous home in, in um, Connecticut, uh, in the countryside. Um, he's had as much success as any writer has ever had, and he finds it frustrating and humiliating. I mean, that's what art is. It's a, uh, I've never known any artist who was worth anything, who was really, really satisfied with the work that he did, um, who felt comfortable. You know, Mel Brooks, it's my privilege to know him a little bit over the years. He, he, he thinks there's a party going on and he hasn't been invited, you know, to this day. Brooks, yeah, I mean, he's a giant, uh, a, a titan in American um, humor and comedy, in film comedy, television comedy. So, um, you know, if you're looking for comfort and to feel good and to feel reassured, this is this is the, <laughs> the last place to look. It never changes. My son is a, um, he's 26, world's best son. Um, and like his grandfather, my father, he's a musician. And he's launched a career, he's trying to break into um, scoring, composing for films and TV and video games and advertisements and so on. And he's just having a sensational success, you know, and how is he making a living? He's making such a living. Um, his mother and I had to beat up on him. Here's a nice problem to have with your kid. To make sure that it goes to the accountant, our tax prepare guy who also does his taxes, and make sure that the estimated quarterlies are filed on time. 
Otherwise, he's going to have trouble with the IRS. Now, that's the kind of, <laughs> the kind of dilemma you'd like to confront with your kid over your kid. Why am I mentioning this? Because one thing he doesn't seem to get yet is that it never, you know, he he's working very hard. He has a lot, a lot of work, and I'm always telling him a little too much work, and I'm always telling him to better too much than too little. Um, and things have a way of shaking down and, you know, filling up the time that, that's for them. If he had less work, he'd still use all of that time to do to do the work. But what he can only get through experience is the understanding that it's always frustrating and, and difficult. It never comes easy, not for any practitioner. I have a lot of experience myself as a as a writer. I don't consider myself a terribly important writer. But I am a much experienced writer, and I've worked in all of the uh, all of the media. You know, I've worked for all. I've written feature length scripts uh, for all of the studios, the major studios, and many independent production companies. And I've um, had five books published, including best-selling nonfiction and uh, and and fiction. My last novel was a Times bestseller for one week. Not a small thing. Um, so from my own experience, but not only my own experience, because my experience as an educator allows me, working very closely with other artists on their own work, uh, I kind of learn from their experience as well. And that's the way it is. It's always difficult. It never gets easy. It's like losing weight. People who uh, um, uh, have weight issues often think if they could just get the the 30 to 40 pounds off, the 45, 55 pounds they need to lose, if they could just get that off, then they could stop obsessing about this and stop worrying about this. But it doesn't work that way. Uh, if you want to keep the weight off, you got to worry about it every day. I'm, um, I, I like to, to think that I'm fit. Uh, why is that? Because I, ever, you know, I never go on a diet. Life is my diet. Um, every day day I go to the pool, you know, you sit, you're on your butt in your chair as a writer, you know, you gotta get, uh, you, you, actors and dancers, singers understand the instrument, the body is your, your body is, that's your instrument, you gotta take care of it. Writers don't understand that as well sometimes. Um, you gotta take care of yourself and you have to stop uh, looking for satisfaction and um, uh, calm regarding, you know, your your work. I never knew any writer who's really, really successful who wasn't uh, uh, unhappy with the way stuff came out. I just, um, you know, Julius Epstein, who wrote uh, Rest His Soul, He's Gone Now, but uh, I met him a few times. He would gripe and cough about how they ruined Casablanca. Uh, he was he wanted it to be this way and his brother had an idea for this, but oh no and that and that, there he is all these years later Talking about how they wreck Casablanca. It's not really that good. He doesn't think Casablanca If only somebody would wreck my movie like they wrecked Casablanca Woody Allen, I read an interview some time ago with Woody Allen and they said uh, When you look back at your last uh, at, You know you look back at your previous movies your early movies and Woody said stop they said, what's the matter? They said, I don't. I don't look back at my early movies. I don't look back at any of my movies. And they said, well, surely you've you've pulled Annie Hall off the shelf over the last 40 years and taken a peek. Manhattan, seen at least some of it. He said, no, not one frame. Why not? And he said, because he hates everything about them. And now Manhattan and Annie Hall are two of the best movies ever made, in my view. Um, and here he is, the guy who, who wrote and directed them, which, you know, who, he says, all I see is stuff I wish I had done differently. Um, I never knew anybody who had a, a different attitude about it by that. You know, there's a very famous book, uh, Miss Ad it's called Adventures in the Screen Trade, uh, William Goldman, and um, Goldman, usually successful writer and its most famous line, the most famous line in the book is, um, nobody knows nothing. Because um, it really is, this is a business where the exception is the rule and uh, you just never know how it, that's going to come out. But there's a much better line in that book, it seems to me, that is overlooked by most people. He's at a meeting, Sidney Pollack and 
uh, the, the late director is at the meeting and he wants, he, Pollock wants to do a script that um, Bill has written and they're talking to the money guy in a restaurant and it's not going well. They're not, you can see it's not, this guy's just not interested in that film, the, you know, too risky, too whatever, he doesn't want to do it. And as it starts to get worse and worse, uh, and this is as described by uh, Goldman, Sidney, Sidney Pollock says, wait a second, and he reaches for the script and he, and Pollock, real, uh, Goldman realizes, oh my God, oh no, he's actually going to now read to the investor, the potential investor, a passage from the script. And this horrifies Goldman and he has the line that I'm focusing on, which is now you have to understand, I hate everything I've ever written. That's William Goldman. He wrote Butch and Sundance, for God's sake. Uh, you know, hugely, hugely successful writer. There can't be, there are writers as successful as Bill Goldman, but none more so. And uh, artists should not look back at their, at their work. And uh, if they do, they're going to be disappointed in it. Um, I uh, have had a lot, a lot of praise on some of the things that I've done. Uh, certainly my last novel, as I say, was a... Uh, uh, made the Times bestseller list and uh, is in action, uh, potential film rights um, sale uh, right now potentially happening. And um, my screenwriting book has been in in print for uh, you know a quarter of a century uh, and won a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of praise. When I pick up those books occasionally. And just open them up to the middle to take a look around. Boy, all I see is mistakes, uh, poorly um, uh, stated um, notions, uh, clumsy diction, um, awkward phraseology. Uh, you know, it's just constantly. I'm just constantly wincing. And this is stuff that a lot of people have, uh, you know, Lance Black, I just mentioned, uh, blurbed it, said it was really, really uh, a very fine book. To my astonishment, he clearly read it. Uh, David Kep, uh, who's a hugely successful writer and a, uh, an alumnus uh, who studied UC screenwriting at UCLA, uh, praised it to the skies. and. Um, Many, many other people, but I don't, you know, I, can, I don't really, you know, I can barely tolerate it. And I think that's um, common. I think that's pretty common among successful artists. Uh, and uh, they should not look back, but, but forward.